and to his descendants after him. But Moses spoke to this effect, that his descendants would be aliens in a foreign land, and that they would be enslaved and mistreated for 400 years. And whatever nation to which they be in bondage, I myself would judge, said God. And after that, they will come out and serve me in this place. And he was talking about Israel because he was in Israel at the time. Now, what God said to Abraham in Genesis 15 is important too. This is when he put him to sleep and he gave him the covenant. This is what he said to him. He said, no for certain. You know how verily, verily Jesus says? No for certain. I would take that to the bank. That your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, where they will be enslaved and oppressed 400 years. But I will also judge the nation whom they will serve, and afterward they will come out with many possessions. But as for you, Abraham, you shall go to your fathers in peace, and you will be buried at a good old age. That was the promise. Now, here's something interesting, too. Look at what it says. Then in the fourth generation, they will return here, for the iniquity of the Amorite is not yet complete. Now, Avon means iniquity. It's the word iniquity. Okay? And iniquity means to be made crooked. Generational wounds from the past are iniquities. That is holding you back from your purpose and your destiny. If you're going on a road and it's crooked, it's holding you back from getting where you need to go. That's what it's talking about. And your purpose and your destiny. That's why we have to speak a blessing over people. A father's blessing. Because people have believed all the words that people have said to them. And they've stayed right where they were. They've heard, I'm dumb. I'm worthless. And so their lives are lived out to a, um, to, to a fulfillment of that, those words. That's why you've got to be very careful that you don't call your kids stupid or worthless. Because honestly, that's a self-fulfilled prophecy. They will become that. So whenever you find someone who's been physically abused or mentally abused, you need to, tell, you need to give them a father's blessing. You need to show them that this is not who they are. That this is what God says you are. Not what your parents say you are. That means nothing. That was said in the soul realm. Break that off of them and call it in the spirit realm whatever you see in them which is good things. Bless them. That's why it's called a father's blessing. But I wanted to show you this. Uh, Proverbs 18, 21, we speak it all the time. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. You can kill or you can bring to life. You're either a life-giving spirit or a life-sucking soul. In Exodus 34, 6 through 7, then the Lord passed by in front of him and proclaimed, the, this is what, um, when Moses said, Lord, let me see your glory. And he said, this is my name. The Lord's name is the Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love and kindness and truth, who keep loving kindness for thousands. Now watch. Who forgives iniquity, transgression, and sin. Yet he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished, visiting the iniquity of fathers on the children and on the grandchildren to the third and fourth generation. Why isn't transgression and sin passed on? It says, visiting the iniquity, not iniquity, transgression, and sin on the fathers, of the fathers. So only the iniquity is passed on to the third and fourth generation. And so I'll show you why. If they confess, Leviticus 26, 40, for the 42, if they confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their forefathers in their unfaithfulness, which they committed against me, and also in their acting with hostility against me, or if their uncircumcised heart becomes humbled so that, we, that they then make amends for their iniquity, then I will remember my covenant with Jacob, and I will remember also my covenant with Isaac, and my covenant with Abraham as well. I will remember the land. So we have to ask God to forgive us of our iniquity and forgive our forefathers of their iniquity that they passed on to us. They made us crooked. 
until we break that. That's why generational things can be broken with the blood of Jesus. But until you do it, that person is walking crooked in their life. That's why they're never going to be successful. That's why the blood of Jesus can call them out of that and break that off. They don't, that doesn't have to be their future. It was their past, but by the blood of Jesus, it covers all that. And they can come right out of that and become very successful. If you're carrying around generational wounds, this is what you're to say aloud. This is the Aaronic blessing. Let's say it together, okay? It's in Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. Come on. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. And just so you know what the word blessing is in Hebrew, the Lord bless you. It means to be on your knee and humble. Bless The Lord is going to bless you. That's what it means. Now, I found the word Joseph. Remember, I think I spoke this when we were doing it, but I wanted to go over it again. This is the Hebrew alphabet. Remember, every letter has, it's a picture language. The Hebrew um, language is a picture language. That's how they would have a whole story by just one letter. But anyway, the, the letters with Joseph is Yod, Vav, and Yod means a hand. Vav is a nail or a peg, okay? And then the next one is Samek, and that is like a two-by-four propping something up. It's a prop, okay? And then Pei, which means mouth. So Yod, Vav, Samek, Pei, and that is Joseph. You can go to the next one. Okay, that's Yod, Vav, Samek, Pei. Those letters going from right to left. Okay, and you can see them in the picture language. Yod, Vav, Vav, Samic, Pe. See, it looks like a mouth. See that? And it looks like a two by four. I mean, it was like you could see what they were trying to say. And it's interesting how the Hebrew language is. But anyway, what does it mean? It means hand and the nail supporting the mouth. God's word. Because we know that Joseph is a type of shadow of the Messiah. In Genesis 50, now we're at our lesson. Genesis 50, 1 through 6. Then Joseph fell on his father's face and wept over him and kissed him. Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. So the physicians embalmed Israel. Now 40 days were required for it, for such is the period required for embalming. And the Egyptians wept for him 70 days. That's important. Then the days of mourning for him were past. Joseph spoke to the household of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found favor in your sight, please speak to Pharaoh, saying, And this is, um, I want to talk about, in this one, I want to talk about embalming. You know, Egyptians, I was thinking about where they got this information from. And the Egyptians got a lot of their stuff, this is crazy, but seriously, from the Sumerians. And when you start studying all this stuff and studying their hieroglyphics and all that, the Egyptians were in... in visited best thing i could say from outer space now it was it was nephilim the nephilim showed the egyptians i think how to embalm because it, it's amazing i mean they still their bodies are still even um preserved today but the egyptians had perfected the art of embalming the dead um they had this was about their beliefs about the afterlife that's why they did it they embalmed because they they had strong religious beliefs about the afterlife because i believe that came from all their religion came from the nephilim but the physical preserve physical preservation was key in the survival of death by the immortal soul as far as they were concerned. According to the long-established Egyptian cult of Osiris, the god of the underworld. And we know that when God came with Moses and, and the ten plagues, we know they were going against one god after another. The Egyptians believed in all these demonic gods. So this is one of the gods of the underworld that gave them this information. That's not the reason or the circumstance that Jacob was embalmed, though. Just so you know that. Jacob's body had to be taken on a 200-mile trek back to the promised land. Okay? 